Hello guys, my name is Prince and this is my center. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Post your comments and questions on my social media handles and I'll respond to it. We are on the topic bearings. In the previous video, we learned how to write compass bearings and represent them on diagrams. In this video, we are going to learn how to write three point bearings and represent them on diagrams. So let's learn more about three point bearings. In a three point bearing, the angles are measured in the clockwise direction from the geographic north. We learned in the previous video that for compact bearings, the angles are measured either from the left, from the north or the south. And the direction in which you measure the angle depends whether the other cardinal point is the west or the east. For three point bearings, the angles are always measured from the geographic north in the clockwise direction. Now we saw from the previous video that when we draw our diagram this way, this point here is the geographic north or the north. For three point bearings, the angles are always measured from the north and they are always measured in the clockwise direction. So for three point bearings, the angles are always measured from this north in this direction. So we always measure the angles in clockwise direction from the north. What you have to know about three point bearings is that the north usually picks beginning from the north the angle there is zero so the angle from this at this place is zero we learned in the previous video that between the north and this side is 90 degrees so from zero when you move in a clockwise direction to this point is 90 degrees moving from this point to this point is another 90 degrees so when you add it to it you get 180 degrees now from this point to this point is also another 90 degrees so you add it to 180 degrees and you get 270 degrees from this point here which is 270 degrees back to the north will be another 90 degrees so when you add it that will be 360 degrees these values are very very important you need to know them because we are going to use them a lot in our studies on bearings the angles in three point bearings are usually written using three digits. Let's pick some examples and see how to represent three point bearings on diagrams. So, the first example represent the flame graphically or represent the flame on diagrams. We have four questions here. We will take them one after the other and solve it. So, we pick the first one, which is 60 zero, six, zero degrees because three point bearings are written in three degrees 60 degrees will be written as zero six zero so when you see zero six zero is the same as 60 degrees we have learned that to represent three point bearings on diagrams we measure the angle from the geographic north which is this side in the clockwise direction so the angle gives us an indication of how much we are supposed to turn here the angle given us is 60 degrees so it means that we are supposed to turn 60 degrees from this north in the clockwise direction so we are supposed to turn 60 degrees in this direction okay and that is exactly what we are going to do so you draw an arc that represents 60 degrees once again between this side and this side is 90 degrees so make sure that 60 degrees represents something that looks like 60 degrees it should be more than half your 60 degrees shouldn't be too small and it shouldn't be too big too okay so after you've done that you draw the line through it as we did in for compass bearings and you indicate the angle there so the angle there is 60 degrees very very simple let's look at the next one the next one is one one two degrees one one two degrees once again for three point bearings the angles are always measured in the clockwise direction from the geographic north so here is the geographic north so for one one two degrees we'll be measuring it from this line here 
in this direction so we are going to measure 112 degrees in this direction from this line here from the zero line okay now let's begin we know that from zero to this point here is 90 but the angle we are looking for or we are measuring is 112 degrees which means that 112 degrees will be in this quadrant will be in this zone this area so it will be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees because when we move from here up to this point here it's 90 degrees but we are looking for 112 degrees so it will be within this area so we need to measure the angle left what will be left in order to get 112 degrees and to do that it's very very simple we subtract 90 degrees from this angle that has been given to us so it's going to be 1 1 sorry 1 1 2 degrees minus 90 degrees and that is going to give us 22 degrees what that means is that if we add 22 degrees to 90 degrees you are going to get 1 1 2 degrees the reason being that when we move from this side to this side we are at 90 degrees but we are looking for 1 1 2 degrees so if you want the angle left we subtract this 90 degrees from 1 1 2 degrees and we just found out that that is 22 degrees so it means that we have to measure 22 degrees from this 90 degrees not from here from 90 degrees so we measure 22 degrees from 90 degrees so we write you draw something small here we draw our line through it then we indicate that this is 22 degrees so in actual sense we have actually measured from this line here up to this point which is one one two degrees but because we are looking for this angle we are going to indicate this as 22 degrees because if you add 22 degrees to 90 degrees we are going to get 112 degrees which was given to us how that is clear so we add 22 degrees to 90 degrees you remember how we got the 22 degrees 112 degrees minus 90 degrees will give us 22 degrees which means that we have to add this 22 degrees to 90 degrees in order to get the 112 degrees so we have been able to represent this angle on the diagram let's consider the next question 192 degrees 192 degrees once again don't forget that we are always measuring from the geographic north which is this point in the clockwise direction so from the north in the clockwise direction okay now let's do that so if you are measuring from the north in the clockwise direction, means that you move from zero to this side is 90 degrees we are looking for 192 degrees so that will not be enough we move from 90 to this side is 180 degrees we are still looking for 192 degrees so it means that that will not be enough but looking at 192 degrees you can see that it's between 180 degrees and 270 degrees which means that you you have to add something to 180 degrees in order to get 192 degrees and that will be the small angle that you are looking for and how do we find that that is going to be 192 degrees minus 180 degrees so this is going to give us 192 degrees minus 180 degrees okay sorry minus 180 degrees and that will be 12 degrees what that means is that if we add 12 degrees to 180 degrees you we'll get 192 degrees so you will measure 12 degrees from 180 degrees you draw a line through it then you indicate it as 12 degrees so from here when you move from 0 to 90 degrees we have that here from 90 degrees to 180 degrees that will be on this line we add 12 degrees and we now get 192 degrees to represent the bearing on this diagram once again remember how we got the 12 degrees 192 degrees minus 180 degrees let's move on to the next example 332 degrees 332 degrees 
don't forget that we are measuring the angle from the geographic north in the clockwise direction from the geographic north in the clockwise direction so let's measure we begin from the geographic node. So we measure from 0 up to this point, which is 90 degrees. From 90 degrees to 180 degrees, we are still not up to 332 degrees. So we will be going from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. It's still not up to 332 degrees. So you, you move on. Don't forget that this point here is 0 degrees at the same time, 360 degrees. So it means that this new angle, which is 332 degrees, will be between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. That means that you have to add some value to 270 degrees, or you have to add a value to 270 degrees in order to get 332 degrees. How do you find that value? It is 332 degrees. That value will be 332 degrees minus... 270 degrees and that is going to be 62 62 so it means that we have to measure 62 from 270 degrees remember that it is in the clockwise we are going in the clockwise direction so 262 from this 260 uh, 62 from 270 degrees we measure 62 degrees clockwise direction you measure sorry we measure 62 degrees clockwise direction from this 270 degrees so 62 is big so you draw something which is big enough then you draw your line through it and you indicate it as 62 degrees so it means that if you are measuring from the zero in the clockwise direction you measure to this point 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees we add 62 degrees to it and we have 332 degrees it's very important that you understand how to represent compass bearings and three point bearings on diagrams we will be using them a lot when we get to application of bearings so if you understand how to draw them now when we get there it will be very very easy for you to understand the thing that you'll be doing Pick more examples and try your hands on it. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. You subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below. Share the link with your friends or people who might be interested so that they can also enjoy the video. In the next video, we are going to learn how to represent the bearing of one point from another on a diagram. Bye-bye.